Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me. So today, this week's video is gonna be talking all about my boob job that I had six weeks ago. So I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're now well aware that I had a boob job. But yeah, so six weeks ago today, I had a breast augmentation and I have spoken about it, but I've tried to kind of keep a lot of it back until I was at this six week mark because I kind of wanted to go through as much of the recovery process as possible and be really like secure and happy in my decision before I start sharing it. Also, I was never gonna recommend a surgeon until I was really happy with the results and especially not initially because I'll go into it, but like when you first have your boobs done, they do not look nice for the first few weeks. Like they're kind of scary. So I was obviously not gonna recommend anyone at that point because I didn't know what the final result looked like. But I think six weeks on, we're now looking more towards the final result. We're definitely not there, but like it's more towards it. So like I'm definitely happy with my decision. And yeah, just wanna sit down and speak to you guys about it because I know a lot of people have had questions. So I'm gonna kind of run through why I had it done, where I had it done, my experience with it all, and then go into a little Q&A section because I did get some questions from you guys on Instagram. Before we do get into the video, I just want to make it clear I'm not advertising or encouraging plastic surgery. It's a massive, massive decision. Um, yeah, I just want to roll that out before we get into it. I'm not promoting it or anything like that. It was a choice that I made that I feel like was right for my body, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's right for your body as well. Definitely do a lot more research than this video if you are considering it. I think the best place to start is kind of like why I made the decision and when I made the decision. So I actually made the decision to have a breast augmentation about, I wanna say like four or five years ago. I remember I was about 20. I basically thought to myself, if you can get to 25 and you still wanna have this done, then you definitely do because you've sat on it for five years. And it basically got to like last year, um, obviously when I was 23 and I still really, really wanted it done. And I was quite far into my fitness journey at that point. I remember I went away with Joe and I was the leanest I'd ever been. and in my opinion, the best shape I've ever been in. But I just remember thinking, there's just this one area of my body that I've just never been that happy with. And I work my ass off in the gym and I work so hard to eat well and stay on track. And this one area is actually something that I cannot change in the gym. No matter how hard I work, there is no way I can make my boobs grow. Um, and when me and Joe were away in Marbella, I remember we were getting some bikini pics and I just, I didn't feel good in a lot of them. It was at the point where like, bikini tops weren't staying on me because I was at that point of lean where like I didn't really have any breasts like when I'd move my arms up they'd ride up they'd bunch up and I just didn't feel very confident in my own body and I want to make it clear I was never unhappy there was no point where I hated my boobs and I hated how I looked I never had that I just was unhappy and it was an area of my body that I wanted to change and basically towards the end of the year I kind of came into a financial situation where I could actually afford to make the decision and that was not a position I'd ever been in before. So after a lot of consideration and a really long chat with my mum as well, because I think it's good to bounce off other people if you have these ideas, especially people like your mums or your dads or people like that, if you feel comfortable talking to them about it because they've got a lot of life experience and the majority of the time they'll probably know other people who have been through it. Like quite a lot of my mum's friends had had boob jobs. So she was able to kind of give me like their perspective on it like 30 years after they'd had it done so yeah i had a really long chat with my mum and basically decided that i did definitely want to go ahead with this so i finally made the decision december last year and i actually found my surgeon pretty quickly so a lot of people wonder like how do you find a surgeon how do you find the right person i had actually found my surgeon pretty early on, like about two years before. Um, he was kind of someone that I kept seeing pop up and I kept seeing girls tag around Manchester that they'd had their boobs done by him. And I always thought, oh my God, theirs look really, really good and really natural. And I think that was what I always wanted. I always wanted a really, really natural look. Like I genuinely was like, if I come out and I look like I've got two balloons stuck on my chest, I will probably cry. So yeah, I wanted to go for a really natural look. And this was just the guy that I'd seen and basically done that. I still had a big shop around like you shouldn't just focus in on one person so i did have a bit of a look around i will leave his instagram here and then pop a link to his instagram in the description box but yeah i just kept coming back to him because every time i look at his work i thought that's exactly how i want mine to look um and also a big factor for me was the fact that he was based in manchester i didn't want to travel down to london I didn't want to travel to like birmingham or anywhere like that i wanted to stay somewhere fairly local so that touch wood if anything had have gone wrong i was only like 30 minutes away from a hospital and didn't have to get in the car and travel like four hours or travel post-surgery because the thought of that just sounded awful so he is based in wilmslow so i went for my first consultation i think it was probably 
it was the end of last year um i think it was around november time and basically went in and was set on my decision then and i was like definitely want them done we booked in for january so i was actually supposed to be having the surgery done in january this year however if you guys remember i was actually working with shreddy at that time on their january challenge so it didn't really work i basically had to move the surgery because i didn't want to miss out on the opportunity of working with shreddy so we ended up pushing the surgery back to march um but basically when i went for the consultation i just knew immediately he made me feel so comfortable i felt so listened to like i said a really big thing for me was having a really natural look i basically explained what i did for my job i said that i didn't want to feel like i looked like i had fake boobs i wanted them to look as natural as possible um, um, and I just felt like that was already taken on board and he was just very like cool, calm and collected, knew what he was talking about and I felt very trusting in him. And when you're having something done like this, I think it's so important that you find someone that you are a million percent trust in and you know that they're gonna kind of bring your vision to life and not go off and like do their own thing. They're actually paying attention to what you're saying. So that was really big for me. So yeah, I made the decision obviously book surgery had to move the surgery so yeah i decided to go ahead with it in march that was right at the end of the shreddy challenge so i actually changed my size between those consultations so in the back of my head i always think like it happened for a reason it gave me a little bit longer to kind of think about the size i wanted to go and i think that's really really important so when i went for my original consultation i was so stupid i forgot to take a sports bra which is like the one thing they tell you to bring so i just had this little top on and we put like the implants in because that's what they do they try the implants in so you can like judge the sizes and look at them kind of like in the mirror and stuff i actually chose a bigger size on that initial consultation then when I went back for the second pre-surgery consultation, I actually decided to change the size and go for a smaller size because I felt like it just fit in with my frame more, um, which is strange because I was actually heavier in my second consultation than I was in my first. I think potentially I just got a bit carried away and I just thought, oh my God, like I'm going to have boobs. I just want like really big boobs. Um, but you do always have two consultations anyway. So you always have a pre-consultation like the first one where you book in the date and then one just before, um, which is obviously the reason why, because you can change your mind in between that time. So I'm definitely glad that I went for the smaller ones now because I cannot imagine having them any bigger. Like they feel pretty humongous to me now. <laughs> Even though they're probably not, they do feel like they are. I think this portion of the video is probably the bit that people are the most interested in is like the actual surgery itself and the aftercare so the surgery itself on the day was not nervous at all i think again having that faith in my surgeon and all of that stuff really really helps um so i was at wilmslow hospital so it's a private hospital so felt very very looked after in there anyway um it was really really lovely i had like my own private room i'll put in pictures throughout this as well so you guys can kind of see um of any like footage i got when i was there um but yeah i had my own private room which was really nice all the nurses were super lovely i literally got there two hours before i think the one thing that really distracted me was the fact that my surgery was actually at 12 30 so i couldn't eat prior to that so i had to wake up and not eat anything because when you're going under general anesthetic you can't eat before so i think i was actually so hungry that i was so excited to get the surgery over with just so i could eat so i think that kind of did distract me from it so it's kind of like a blessing in disguise i think so i got to the hospital no one was actually allowed in with me they still had covid rules in place at that time so i did have to go by myself again when i get a bit nervous or i'm having something big going on i go a bit quiet anyway so it was quite nice to just be by myself and kind of like in my head and stuff so i got there dr nasar came in did all the drawings um which looked super funny then i had the anesthesian anesthesia anesthetic anesthesia so the doctor who does the anesthetic came in basically spoke through everything had a lot of forms to sign out we went through all the complications that could potentially arise um aftercare again because he said i was going to be pretty out of it afterwards so it's better to explain it before um, and go through all the medication that i was going to need to take afterwards as well then yeah within two hours I was whisked off into the anesthetic room and put to sleep and it honestly happened so quickly and then I think when I woke up like I said I was very out of it when I woke up um I just remember waking up and then someone saying do you feel sick and me just being like yeah like I felt like I was gonna vomit everywhere and then they just said give her some anti-sickness and then that was it I just fell asleep and then woke up again 
a few hours later, Dr. Nassar came in and just like checked that everything was okay. Um, I had like a tiny little look, but not really because you're bandaged up. Um, and you also have a big strap over the top, um, which you have to kind of like hold them down. And then I think I waited about four hours. I got fed so much food. It was great. I had like a tuna toasty. I got to have like unlimited ice cream. So I was literally having the time of my life. I didn't actually want to leave if I'm being completely honest. Also at this point, I felt fine. I had been pumped with so much anesthetic. I literally remember being sat there like, why does... Why do people complain about this? Like, I feel great. Like, I was so chatty to all the nurses. I was on the phone to my friends. Like, oh my God, I had a boob job. Like, I was literally loving life. Um, Joe came to get me, like, I think four or five hours afterwards, which I was really sad to leave. I probably happily could have stayed there overnight just so I could have had more ice cream. Um, Joe took me home and I came back to my flat. So my mum was staying with me. Biggest tip of aftercare, you need someone with you. I definitely could not have done it without my mum being with me. Like, I just, you just can't. You need someone because you can't move your arms very much. You can't cook. You can't lift things. Like, you have to have someone with you. So I came back and my mum was here and the first night was fine. So for the first week, you do have to sleep upright. So I slept on this gorgeous sofa um i had an l-shaped cushion and a neck pillow that i slept with and the first night i didn't find that a problem i thought it was absolutely fine um i woke up the next morning and yeah it wasn't great from there onwards i'd say probably from like the afternoon when like that anesthetic started to wear off it did get difficult i will say there was never any point where i felt like i was in pain I was just very, very uncomfortable and days three to five were definitely the worst. I think the pain like here was the worst because that was probably the area that had to stretch the most. You can't really do anything. You just feel a bit sick. Like the painkillers make me feel very sick. So I was on cocodamol and antibiotics, but I did try to like wean myself off of them quite quickly because of the fact they were making me feel a bit sick. Um, but yeah, they were definitely the worst days. I think you just feel very groggy, very tired um very swollen um and the sleep i just wouldn't wish that upon anyone that was probably the worst part of it for me having to like go to bed every single night uncomfortable but sat upright where you know you're not going to sleep very well i think every night i slept for about six hours um and then you'd wake up a bit uncomfortable you need to get up and need a wee but like it's so strange because the reason you have to sleep sat upright is i think for like swelling and things like that but you also have like no upper body strength it's like someone has literally come in and taken away any muscles in your upper body so if you were to lie down you wouldn't actually be able to get up so every morning even like when i'd wake up to have a wee by myself i would genuinely have to like scoot my legs over the side and use all of my leg strength to try and hoist myself up um and that just yeah it was not fun but it got better after day five. It's just the initial days three to five and everybody says they're the worst as well. So yeah, I was pretty sleep deprived through those first five days. Wasn't in the happiest of moods. Also, just a side note, when you first get your breast done, obviously they're swelling. I went under the muscles, so the muscles were contracting. They were very distorted and it's completely natural, but they looked horrendous they were like pointy rectangles like literally something out of a horror film i don't even know i look like madonna when she had like cone boobs they just were not okay but like i knew that at the time so i kind of was just trusting the process because they do settle when they do fluff so if you are having a boob job i my best advice is just to ignore them for the first three to five days but it's so hard because you just want to go and look at them in the mirror but literally from the side they were like square yeah, I was, I was not happy at all. Obviously, sleep deprived. I had square boobs. I was so bloated. The most bloated I've ever been in my whole entire life. I spoke about that a lot on Instagram because it was so uncomfortable. Like, I'll put in some pictures. But yeah, the bloat was probably one of the worst bits. So I think you really go through it in those first few days. Like, I don't think I'm mentally prepared enough for that. I think I kind of was slightly naive at that part of it purely because... I'd seen so many videos and everyone had had different experiences and I kind of thought, do you know what? Out of sight, out of mind. I'm going to have my own journey with it. Everyone feels differently about it. Um, so yeah, I think I was maybe a little bit naive to that and I was, yeah, pretty miserable for the first five days. It was really tough. 
being sleep deprived, extremely bloated and having cone boobs. Yeah, it was not, was not the one, but it is a very trust the process situation. And after that fifth day, it definitely did start to get better. So after day five, I started to notice I could move my arms a bit more. One arm I could move more than the other one. One boob was definitely less sore, um, which is actually completely normal. One boob does normally settle before the other one as well. Um, so I was kind of doing everything with like this arm and then not really doing much with this arm. Um, the pain did actually swap over at some point anyway. Like one day I woke up and this one hurt and then this one didn't. So yeah, it's just a bit of a weird one, but I think everybody kind of has those parts of it. Um, but yeah, from day five, I could start to like lift very light things. I was walking around, but walking and kind of going outside, I just felt like I had this like immense pressure on my chest and I kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say like it felt like they were going to burst, but like that was what kept going through my head. I was like, oh my God, like they're going to pop. But I think that was just me being very overly stressy about it, especially because you do have that band over the top of them for the first two weeks that does apply like another amount of pressure as well so from week one i could then sleep in my bed more at like a 45 degree angle so my sleep got better and everything did start to ease up and it definitely did get a lot easier from week one i would say from week two was when i kind of felt a bit happier in myself as well um a bit more like okay with my decision because obviously straight afterwards you kind of expect to come out and be like oh my god like i feel 10 out of 10 but you really don't like my body was so bloated it didn't even look like my body like i said i had these weird cone boobs i couldn't even walk about i couldn't do things my mum was having to do everything for me like it was it was a roller coaster and a lot of people do talk about that and kind of talk about like post-surgery blues and things like that but i definitely feel like i did feel quite down for two weeks because of those side effects of it. Um, but from two weeks, it definitely did start to get easier. My bloat started to subside. So my body started to kind of look like my body again. They did start to settle from week two. Um, they were still quite like square and very, very hard. Um, I think it was more around like week four that they did start to soften. And even now, like they still are quite hard. Um, on like this part of it and kind of on the top but they're definitely softening like around the sides um and getting a bit like fluffier every day so i think if you are having a breast augmentation you just need to remember that like every day does get easier with every single day i notice differences in like my mobility the amount i was able to walk the pressure i felt so yeah just take it day by day because it does definitely get easier day by day so one other thing as well is after week two you can actually properly shower which i definitely feel like helped my mood so after the first week i had to go and have the bandages changed but then you still couldn't shower for a further week so it was only after week two that you could shower and yeah that definitely brightened my mood because even though I was washing in the sink and things like that it's just not the same um, and I just felt really really grubby so yeah having a shower did definitely help as well so like I said after week four was definitely when I started to notice some kind of like relaxing and fluffing a little bit more um, and my body had gone completely back to normal at that point I did feel like I wanted to gym at that point you're not supposed to gym for six weeks I did feel like I wanted to week four, so I did go and do like steps and cardio and stuff. However, I did still feel like a tightness and a bit of pressure in my chest. Um, so like I said, I'm now week six. I'm training kind of back to normal. Um, I'm just training legs. I did try to do an arm session a few days ago and it just didn't feel right. I just don't feel like it's worth it because... I went under the muscle so if I'm training that muscle or my arms or anything it's kind of pulling on that area and I'm just not used to it at the moment so I just want to wait for them to settle a bit more so I think I'm going to wait another month to even kind of consider training arms but yeah back in training legs at the moment everything feels complete normal my mobility is like fine I don't want to lift my arms up too much because I'm not sure if I'm shaved them um but yeah my mobility is fine like I can go out I can walk about I don't have to wear the support bra anymore unless I sleep that's when I do have to put it on still so that is basically where we're up to now I am super happy with my decision like I said it's definitely a bit of a roller coaster I did have moments where I had this kind of like panic purely because of the fact that I wasn't really in my normal routine for six weeks and that affects me a lot mentally so i think i was kind of like having that and then having a lot of body issues with like the swelling and the distortedness of my chest um so i did definitely go through some moments where i had little panics um and i'm not afraid to say that because i definitely did however looking back now it's completely normal you've just had a really massive surgery done your body is completely changed it would be weird if you didn't kind of 
panic about it i guess um but no we're on week six now definitely super happy in my decision definitely really happy with the shape and size of everything that i went to um i'm feeling pretty much back to normal i obviously trained legs this morning and i said to joe like there was one point where i did feel like a little bit of pressure but i think again it's just your chest muscles haven't been like activated properly so even when i'm like lifting up weights to put them on the bars and things like that my chest is probably still feeling a little bit sore and maybe moving in ways that it hasn't over the past six weeks so it's just like teething issues i suppose that's the way i'm thinking about it um but there's no pain or anything like that it's just a small bit of tightness occasionally when i'm working out but outside of that i feel absolutely fine so i'm gonna jump into the q and a section of the video and kind of do like a little quick fire of the main questions that you guys wanted to know so the biggest question was obviously price so i paid around six thousand pounds i think it was just under six thousand i think it was like 5,700 and something. However, I rounded it up because you do obviously have to buy things like the support bras, which were 40 pounds each, the L-shaped pillow, which cost me about 20 pounds, um, and just little extra things like that that do kind of add it up. So yeah, overall, it basically cost me around 6,000 pounds. A lot of people wanted to know what sizing I went for. So I went under the muscle um, purely because it gives a more natural look because your muscle actually presses down on the implants um, and gives them a more subtle shape. I went for round implants as well, again, because he said that if I went for round implants, I would get more cleavage, which to be honest, was one of the main things that I did want. I wanted the fullness up here. So I went under the muscle, round implants, and I actually had two different sizes. So this one here is 275 cc's and this one is 330 cc's because I had one boob bigger than the other, which is completely normal anyway. And I think that makes me about a D slash double D. It kind of depends like where I go and get my bras. So somebody asked about the scarring. So I am going to pop in a picture of the scars. I am so surprised at how tiny they are. Considering how big of an operation it is they are so small and so neat when i first came out they were obviously quite raised um and they've basically really settled down in the past week as well i have been using a scarring cream every day since week two when i could shower properly every morning and night and i definitely think that's made a massive difference so i'll leave that in the description box as well in case anyone is having it done and wants a really good scarring cream but yeah, i'll pop a picture in so you guys can see how small the scars actually are um so somebody asked do you feel more confident now yeah, I would definitely say I do feel more confident. Even when I went out last weekend with Joey, I wore a dress that I never would have chosen before and I just feel like I've got a lot more shape on my upper body, um, which is something that I've always wanted. And yeah, definitely feel more confident and definitely feel a lot more proportionate in my body as well. I always had a bigger rib cage. Like I was born with like a barrel rib cage. I think that's what they're called. So in terms of my like rib to boob proportions, they always were slightly off and my boobs looked quite small in compared to like my midsection um but i definitely feel like i've got more of like a kind of curve shape now which is what i've always wanted so yeah definitely feeling a lot more confident in my body so somebody said side effects that you didn't expect so i obviously did touch on the fact that like the mental part of it was a lot more challenging than i thought um it is a bit of a roller coaster i also think anesthetic does play a bit of a part in that i did a lot of research after the surgery because i did feel a bit blue and a bit like down for like a week or two um but it is purely your body just adjusting post anesthetic um so it is completely normal but that wasn't something that i ever expected to happen another side effect the dry skin i shed my whole body shed and i think that's probably to do with not being able to wash properly and i wasn't moisturizing but my whole body literally shed like to the point where like my skin was flaking off it was really scary and i was really worried that like i don't know it was just going to be stuck with me for life um but to the point where like when i take off a jacket it would have like skin on the inside of it which is really disgusting um but if you have someone there maybe get them to like moisturize your arms and legs because i really wish i'd have done that um but i think it probably was i didn't moisturize or shower or wash my arms or legs properly for like two weeks because i was washing them but it was just in a sink so you i don't know yeah it wasn't great that was something that i did not expect and did really scare me um but yeah my whole body shed especially my boobs as well um so somebody said i'm having mine done what were your hospital staples okay so the first one is a zip up jumper or top when you come out of surgery you just want to be able to kind of like put something on really quickly as soon as you're done you don't want to be pulling a hoodie over your head or having to like stick your arms up so definitely get a zip up hoodie 
Um, you obviously have to take your bra with you. I did with my surgeon, I had to take a bra. So don't forget that because that's really important. Definitely take a charger in case you're in there for a long amount of time. I would recommend taking an L-shaped pillow as well because you will definitely need one of those post-surgery so i'd recommend taking that for the car journey home just to keep you super comfortable like i said i was pretty out of it but i do remember at the time i was a bit annoyed that i didn't have it because it probably would have just cushioned me a little bit more um comfy joggers and knickers i wore a thong to have surgery who does that am i a psycho yeah I, I literally, as soon as I was in there, I was like, why have I done this? Just wear some granny pants or like even like boys boxers or something like that. Just something a lot more comfortable than a thong. Um, so somebody asked, how do they feel? And I understand this because my biggest scariest thing before my surgery was that I was worried that I would be able to feel them. Um, and that would have really made me feel weird and I would have hated that. However, I can honestly say like, I just forget that they're there now. They just feel like normal boobs. Obviously I said they are still a little bit hard here. Um, but like in this kind of area, like they just feel like my normal boob. Um, in terms of the sensation post-surgery, they did feel quite numb and a bit strange. Um, somebody did ask specifically about nipple um, sensation and my nipple sensation is completely normal. Um, I do hear of some people's going numb and that they don't get it back, but mine is completely normal, touch wood, it will stay like that. And then finally, somebody asked, would you do it again? Yes. Not immediately, but yeah, I, like I said, I'm very, very happy in my decision. I think the process and the recovery process, like I said, was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. And I feel like it really challenged me as well because I'm such an on the go person and I put so much pressure on myself that being kind of forced to have that time off wasn't great for me and I didn't enjoy it. And it did really stress me out because I felt like I was like falling behind with work and, felt like I was falling behind my progress and things like that. So that I definitely did find hard. So like I said, I wouldn't have it done straight away again. But I think for the final results, it is definitely, definitely worth it. So yeah, I am really glad that I did have it done. I just think if you are going into it, definitely don't be naive to the recovery process like I sort of was. Um, and like I said, take your time on the decision. It's a really, really big decision and it's a really big change to your body as well. Please don't underestimate it and just think, oh, boobs, like, a lot changes with your body and yeah i'm not going to preach it you guys too much i just wanted to kind of like share my experience um in the hope that like it can help anyone else or if anybody else is looking to have it done they can kind of like hear that side of it as well because it's just important to be like really open and honest and i'm not going to sit here and say that it was all rainbows and all happy it was tough but i'm definitely on the other end of it now i'm definitely very grateful that i did do it um but yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed the video and if you guys do have any other questions that i have missed feel free to just leave a little comment um and don't forget if you have liked the video to give it a little thumbs up as well and i will see you next sunday